Hey, we are going to be talking about what well, I've titled this video and I'm very excited about today's video and I hope you guys are too. It's called Lady Louise Windsor or should that be Lady Louise Mountbatten Windsor? Uh, the meteoric media rise of the Garden Centre Princess. Now if you don't know why I'm ref referring to her as the Garden Centre Princess we'll get into that in this video. So hello and welcome to everybody. Today is, and I sometimes get my days mixed up recently, but it is Wednesday, August the 24th of 2022. And my goodness, this year is just flying by. Where has the summer gone? My goodness, it's almost you know, transitioning. Uh, it's that point in the summer where we kind of transition in the UK into the autumn. I mean, leaves are falling off the trees. Um, perfect for Lady Louise to go carriage driving, because of course, one of Lady Louise his passions is carriage driving. Of course, she, she got uh, the carriage driving bug from her grandfather, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh. And of course, she inherited his carriage, um, one of his prized possessions. And I'm sure it's something that she will absolutely treasure forever. And of course, she was seen riding it um, during the, the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, of which she actually took centre stage. So we'll get into all of that in a moment. Uh, but first of all, we'll just do a couple of hellos for people in the live chat. If you are watching on Catch Up, I know many of you are not able to make the live chats. Please feel free to leave a comment and chat amongst yourselves in the comment section. But for those that are here right here right now, hello to Lauren, James, Louise. <laughs> Uh, not, oh, is it Lady Louise? Oh, is Lady Louise watching? I'm going to have to watch and be careful what I'm saying. Um, Carmen, Sandy, H. London, Lady Buckingham, Dawn, uh, Queen of Kingsbury, and Leslie, hello to you all. Sorry, I'm not going to say hello to any more individuals because we need to get on with this video. Um, but I'm going to read a really quick comment. H. London says, hey, Elliot. Hey. Uh, I am so thrilled you are doing this. This particular video is something that I've been very excited um, to make and actually Lady Louise is one of those royal characters. Now I often talk about um, I suppose the royal family being a little bit like um, like the characters or um, the yeah the characters of for example like a Shakespearean play uh, on the stage on the royal stage and Lady Louise uh, being young she's only you know she's 18 uh, we'll talk about, you know, what, where she's going to university. That's been revealed as well. So we'll talk about that. But she's young. Um, and of course, I've been a royal watcher all of my life. So I remember when she was born. And I remember her sort of, you know, growing up, being seen at Trooping the Colours and all sorts of different events. And of course, the photographs with the Queen and her, her grandchildren. Because of course, Lady Louise um, is an actual grandchild of the Queen. I mean, it's kind of a little bit misleading with the Queen's great age, with the Queen being 96 and Lady Louise only being 18. You often think of the Queen's grandchildren as being sort of William, Harry, Zara's age, when in fact, actually, the Queen does have a young grandchild um, who is 18. And of course, Lady Louise is the eldest, well, she is the only daughter, but the eldest child of the Earl and Countess of Wessex, Prince Edward and Sophie. So um, it's a little bit misleading with the Queen's great age. People often think that Lady Louise might be, you know, a, a great grandchild. She's not. She's an actual grandchild of the monarch. And we'll talk about what that means in terms of her style um, and title in a moment. Um, James says, I love these videos so much. Thank you. And I'm really, really glad to be back. Thank you also for those of you who watched my previous video, my previous live chat, who, um, who sent me all the best wishes on returning. So thank you uh, so, so much. Lauren says, really loving that the Wessexes are starting to come to the front. Yeah, again, we're going to talk about that in a moment. In fact, I think I just need to kick off um, with actually what it means to be a grandchild of the monarch um, where your your father is the son of a monarch. So it's different for men and women. So Princess Anne is technically older than Prince Edward. She's more senior in terms of age. But because of royal uh, rules, uh, which are otherwise known as letters patent, uh, which is basically the rules about styles and titles and that kind of thing, 
Um, it means that only the children of the sons of monarchs get to be HRH, which is uh, his or her royal highness, and prince or princess of the United Kingdom by birth. Hence why Princess Anne's children um, do not have royal titles. Now, of course, there was talk that the Queen did offer Princess Anne um, titles for her children, but she turned them down. Now, arguably, you could say, you know, that was a good decision, a bad decision. Who knows? Because, um, you know, her children, Mark and Zara, haven't had royal titles. I'm sure if you spoke to them, they'd be able to give you their opinion on whether or not they thought it was a good idea, whether it's been a hindrance or not. Now, of course, royal titles where you are not a full-time working royal, where you do not have a full-time working uh, role within the royal family can be tricky. You can find yourselves in between a rock and a hard place. You can't do right for doing wrong, vice versa. Um, as we have seen with Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie of York, um, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson's children. They have royal titles from birth. They were taken up, they were adopted um, into, into their styles and titles, but yet they do not perform an official royal role. They have had it extremely hard because they've had the privilege of having the title and style, but yet they do not get, um, I suppose, the financial security um, or purpose of having a royal role. They've had to make their way in the world, having jobs, working for their own independent sort of charity work organisations on their own. Now, I'm not going to say that having those royal titles hasn't helped them along the way, but it certainly also is a bit of a hindrance because they've also got the level of scrutiny that comes with being a prince uh, or a princess of the United Kingdom. So titles can be a burden as well as a huge privilege and bonus, which is why when it came to giving titles and styles to uh, the children of the Wessexes, um, Prince Edward and Sophie made the choice when their children were, were born not to give them the HRH and the prince or princess um, title and style of which they are actually entitled to under letters patent. Now this has enabled them to kind of grow up largely out of the spotlight other than those occasions when they have been presented to, to the world in the larger stage, for example, Troop in the Colour and in royal photographs, etc, etc. Um, but it's largely enabled them to grow up, you know, privately as normal as they possibly can, given the circumstances of being a member of the royal family. Now, back in, I do believe it was round about 2017, for the first time ever, Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, um, I shall refer to her here on as Sophie Wessex. I think many people refer to her as Sophie Wessex. Um, she made a comment for the first time about the title, titles and styles of her children. And basically she turned around and said in an interview, um, when they get to age 18, they will be able to choose and decide whether or not they want to adopt the titles in which they have been born into. Now, of course, this is not a complete cut-off point because Lady Louise has reached the age of 18 and we've had no further update on the styles and titles. Uh, so um, I'm thinking that she will probably want to get university done, all that kind of thing, all the education, and actually truly decide what having that title will mean for her, as I'm sure it will with James as well, because James Viscount Seven is a little bit younger. So Lady Louise kind of gets there first in terms of um, age. So will she or won't she adopt the title in due course? Like I say, she certainly hasn't adopted it yet. That's not to say, um, you know, basically any time from now on um, into the future, she could, you know, drop the bomb that she's going to adopt her title. So do let me know in the comment section below, do you think she should take up her title and style or not? Um, do you think Princess Anne was correct sort of not to take on, on royal titles for her children? Do you think Sophie and Edward were correct not to style their children 
um, princes and princesses from birth. Do let me know your comments in, let, do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, uh, because I'm sure everyone will have different and varying opinions. But for me, when it comes to thinking about Lady Louise's decision as she gets older, it all boils down to what sort of a role she is likely to have within the royal family. Now, if it's going to be similar to that of Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, where you're sort of, you're in the royal family, but you're very much kind of on the peripheral uh, with no royal, no official royal duties, it may prove more of like that hindrance in between a rock and a hard place to have a title. So she may choose not to go down that route. If, however, um, there is actual royal work and a role for her in place, it would most definitely be beneficial to take up that style and title. The same uh, for James, um, if ever he is offered a royal role. Now, of course, before we get to Lady Louise Windsor having a royal role, we do have Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, who are older, and, you know, arguably they are ready, fully formed individuals. Now, regardless of what people may think about Sarah Ferguson, Sarah, Duchess of York, and Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, in terms of how they have brought up their children, despite all the different scandals and things that have gone on, they have actually, one of the things that they have done very successfully, and one of the things that I think they should both be praised for, is bringing up two very well-adjusted individuals who have never really put a foot wrong, they have had their own jobs, they do their own charity work, they have represented the Queen on occasion or accompanied the Queen when, when they have been called up to do. They do not have royal protection, um, you know, they are scrutinised in the press and yet they haven't put a foot wrong. They are good girls, um, well good women, I mean, you know, I remember them as children so, you know, I, I always think of them as, as girls. Um, but no, they are women and they are well-rounded, well-adjusted women who have gone through education and they've gone through hardship. And they do, I mean, okay, they may not have gone through financial hardship and of course they've married well into money and they've had their own children. But they have had struggles in terms of the pressures of the media and they have just carried on. They haven't complained um, neither have they explained, so they've, they've not complained or explained, um, and they've just got on with life, and they have, um, battled through the hand that they have been dealt. Even though it has had great privilege, it has also come with great scrutiny. So, if anybody should be thinking about perhaps getting or deserving a royal role, uh, individuals that are fully formed, Beatrice and Eugenie are there. Um, and like I've said in previous videos, there's only so far you can slim down the monarchy, um, you know, before it starts affecting how many charities and organisations can actually be helped by the royal family. Plus, you know, once the older generation, um, the, the Queen is no longer here, um, we're going to be left with literally Charles and Camilla, uh, William and Catherine, the Wessexes and Princess Anne. Um, Princess Anne, I think, is already completely at capacity. The Wessexes are pretty much there. Uh, William and Catherine are stepping up and taking on more duties. Prince Charles will have, um, you know, some of his own duties that he'll be carrying on doing as king, plus all the king duties, the monarch duties that he will have on top. So perhaps there will be a, a role and a space for Beatrice and Eugenie, and in turn, perhaps Lady Louise Windsor um, Mountbatten Windsor could also potentially have a role. Do let me know. Right, I'm going to stop a moment and just kind of talk, um, read some, some comments. Uh, do, do, let's go back up a little bit. So, um, Lauren says, I do believe they will all be titled when Charles becomes king. Let's hope it's a while. Nothing wrong with Prince Charles, just can't bear the thought of anything happening to the Queen. I think a lot of people are like that. The Queen is not just 
you know, a grandmother to her family, the matriarch of her family. She is the queen, the grandmother of the nation, of the commonwealth, and to a larger extent, you know, a lot of people look up to her around the world as being a bit like a grandmother figure. You know, lots of people, um, you know, don't have a grandmother or have never known a grandmother. And, you know, the queen is one of those figures that people can actually look to. Um, so yes, I think a lot of people do not want to even consider the time when she's not here, but it is important that those within the royal family, the monarchy itself, and of course the country do prepare and make preparations ready for when that transition does eventually happen. Um, Richard Hutchinson says, uh, not sure if you are aware, but tomorrow Prince Edward will have been, not Prince Edward, <laughs> not Prince Edward, the, the, the Queen's son, the other Prince Edward will have been Duke of Kent for 80 years. Wow. I, I mean, that is a, a, well, it's not a role, it's a title, but he has fulfilled a role um, for, for his working life. And he has been a senior royal um, for much of his life and still undertakes duties on behalf of, of the Queen. So, um, so yes, congratulations, um, Your Royal Highness. Um, Queen of Kingsby says, there was an interview with Anne's children. They seem to agree that they got the best of both worlds, being a grandchild of the monarch and not having the burden of a title and public life. Yeah, and I think, you know, the answer is probably somewhere in the middle. It's balance. Um, but with, with, with regards to Lady Louise, Viscount Seven, I think it all hinges upon will they or won't they have a role? And of course, that is ultimately down to Charles and in turn, William. Um, Louise says it's unfortunate. I think you're talking about Beatrice and Eugenie. Uh, they get the stick. They seem really nice, well-adjusted young women. Yeah, absolutely. The York princesses, despite, you know, all the scandal and things that have gone on with their parents over the years, they they are good girls and i think you know the country would be lucky to have them representing the country um on overseas trips or royal engagements that kind of thing uh, lady louise says i would love to see beatrice and eugenie become working royals they have done nothing wrong yeah absolutely you know and and i think the mood of the country that the country has never held beatrice and eugenie accountable for the actions of their parents. Uh, that has never been an issue. I mean, I've never ever seen the media or or just people in general, when they speak about the princesses, they see them. Um, they don't judge them by the actions of their parents, which is how it should be. They are seen as the individuals that they are. Um, Lauren says, I agree, I would love them to become working royals too, but it does look like it will just be senior royals when Charles becomes king. Not sure how practical that really is. Yeah, I mean, it's something that needs thinking about. And, you know, if in practice it doesn't work, then there are readily formed royals, working royals there that could take up the mantle should they want to. Oh, sorry, yes. Did I, did I say that Mark was one of Princess Anne's children? I've just, I've just read a comment. <laughs> yes, there's so many names whizzing around my head. Of course, Mark is their father, Captain Mark Phillips. I should know this. Uh, no, I, I do know this. It's just um, lots of names whiz whizzing around. Yes, Peter is the eldest. And of course, you remember Peter, he got into a slight scandal over milk. Do you remember the milk advert a couple of, well, maybe three years ago, there was a milk advert scandal. <gasps> um, Lady Buckingham says, talking about Louise, I think after university, she should take a title and become a working woman. Well, again, it's not up to her. <laughs> it's, it's whether or not she wants to, but also whether or not Charles and, and William kind of think that she will have a role. Um, Lisa says the royal family need to have someone fill the gap left by Harry and Meghan. There has most definitely been a void. Prince Andrew, Harry and Meghan, um, of course, when, when the Duke of Edinburgh stepped down as well. Um, yeah, there has, there has been a royal void. Um, Richard Hutchinson thinks she'll take up her title when she's finished university. Let's just talk about university. So it has been announced this week that Lady Louise 
we'll be going to St Andrews University in Scotland. Now, of course, this is... Um, it's a, it's a university that has been used by members of the royal family in the past. Most recently, uh, Prince William went there, and of course that is where he famously met his wife, Catherine, uh, Kate Middleton, Catherine Middleton. And of course, you know what happened after all of that. That's been well documented, as well as by myself on this channel. Um, so she's going to St Andrews University. Now, I don't... There is also another connection... I don't think it's just because Prince William went there. It's also because the Wessexes do have a very strong connection with Scotland. Um, Prince Edward was most recently, I think it was, did I say it was 2017? It might have, no, I think it was 2019. Um, he was given an extra earldom, so you can have a double earldom. He was made the Earl of Forfar. It's spelt for far but it is pronounced Forfa, so F-O-R-F-A-R, um, which is a, a, a titular designation, which is uh, basically an, an area of Scotland. Um, so when he is in Scotland, he's known as the Earl, and of course Sophie's known as the Countess of Forfa. So they have very, very strong Scottish associations and links, which I think perhaps in the future, could be a plan to be made stronger. Of course, strengthening the bonds between the, re the rest of the United Kingdom and Scotland. So, it makes perfect sense to have their daughter, and potentially James Viscount Seven when he's older, go to university in Scotland. And I think that is one very important point to make. Um, so, let me just go to my notes, and I will tell you exactly... Um, what she is going to be studying as well. So, um, she is going to be studying um, English at the University um, of St Andrews, which I think is a really good subject. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's one that you can use and adjust to all different kinds of things, no matter what you want to do, whether you end up being a working royal, uh, you know, you can use it for communication, um, or whether or not, you know, you actually want to go into some, you have something in mind. It's it's a good transferable degree and education to have. Um, let's go and talk about the garden centre. So I've called her in this the garden centre princess. Um, it's really, really good. And I think it shows that Edward and Sophie, again, are trying to bring up a really well-adjusted individual. Who knows what it means to have a summer job. So during this summer of 2022, she has been spotted working in a local garden centre. So obviously they live at Bagshot Park in Windsor. So I'm thinking it's a garden centre within the vicinity of the Windsor area. The, the, the exact location has not been um, given out and nor would I say where it is on this channel. Um, because that would be wrong. But, you know, logic dictates that it must be a garden centre within the Windsor sort of area, because she's not going to travel, you know, really, really far distance just for a summer job. Now, she is on a minimum wage job. We do have a minimum wage in the UK. Um, so she won't be earning a great amount of money, but it's a good experience. And she has been said to have worked maybe three, possibly four days a week in the, during the summer months. Apparently she was spotted on a till and she also has duties uh, pruning and watering the flowers, perhaps some stock rotation as well, shelf stacking, um, and lots of uh, people have, were, were members of the public were shocked to see or be served by technically a real life princess. Um, and so, so she, she was recognized and spotted by members of the public, which I think was quite sweet. And like I say, word got out that, of course, um, she was working in a garden centre. That has been confirmed. And I just think it's really good that she's been able to have a summer job, that she knows what it's like to do a little bit of normal, everyday graft, to have a, a typical job. And who knows, you know, she, she may love working in the garden centre so much that she might want to open one when she's older. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure the fact that she's working in a garden centre reflects perhaps that that is one of her interests. Um, so maybe she is really, really, really 
not just into her horses and carriage driving, but also into plants and gardening, uh, which would be really, really good. Let me go back down. Um, Amber Gordon says, I appreciate that the press have pretty much left Lady Louise and her brother alone. However, now that she'll be at university, I don't think that will be long. No, I think kind of the agreement that was made with the press when Princess Diana passed away uh, was, of course, that they would get the press, the media would get regular updates, photo opportunities in exchange for William and Harry being pretty much left alone to live their university life. That deal held up. Um, the media were very, very good in not, you know, kind of putting out stuff. In fact, actually, it was Prince Edward, uh, the Earl of Wessex, that went through a bit of a scandal at the time um, because he was reportedly trying or seeking to make a documentary because, of course, at the time, um, I, I think he still had his television production company um, and he was going to make a documentary, or seeking to, on William and Harry at university. That did not happen. Uh, that was nipped in the bud, and I'm glad it was. But the press actually kept up their end of the deal. They left William and Harry alone. And of course, Lady Louise, although she's having this bit of a, a meteoric media rise, the media has kind of picked up on her. She's coming of age um, she's interesting, she's quirky, um, she looks very much like the Queen. I mean, I've always said, even in her childhood photos, that she is the spitting image of Her Majesty. Just in the face, the eyes, the shape of the face, the nose. Uh, of course, Lady Louise is blonde and fair-haired. The Queen's always had dark hair um, before she went grey. But I think if you literally put the Queen's hair on Lady Louise fitting image. They look so much like there is no denying whose grandchild Lady Louise is. She just looks so much like her grandmother. So she's she's interesting in that regard that she looks very much like the Queen. Um, she dresses um, not in a typical modern way that a girl of 18 would typically dress. You know, she's not she's not going down the lines of Fashion Nova. You know, she's not wearing those you know, really kind of modern clothes. I mean, in a weird kind of way, she dresses a little bit older fashioned for her age, to be honest. Even when you see her out at royal engagements, you know, you think, oh, you know, perhaps that dress that she's wearing could have been one of Sophie's that she's borrowed off mom or, or the hat or whatever it might be. So I still, so I think she's interesting in the fact that she's coming into her own but there's still so much developing to do in terms of knowing who you are as a person. I mean, just think back to when you were 18 or I was 18. Did I, did I think I knew who I was when I was 18? I thought I did. Um, but of course, you, you don't. You don't know really who you are um, or what you like particularly. I mean, you know what you like, but um, it's not fully formed is what I'm trying to say. So Lady Louise, I think, is interesting to the media because... Um, she's this rather curious character. She dresses differently. Um, you know, she is technically a princess. There's that will she, won't she take up that royal mantle. Um, you know, she works in a garden centre. She earns minimum wage. She's going to university. She's interesting. Um, and I think that's what the media have kind of picked up on. You know, and it's really going to be interesting being a royal watcher, kind of watching which way she goes. You know, is she going to suddenly have this kind of, you know, image glow up? Is she suddenly going to start wearing designer clothes? Are we suddenly going to see her wearing Chanel and, you know, looking or, you know, just going down the very kind of Kate Middleton type look with being very stylized? Or will we see her just kind of wearing these kind of comfortable, um, almost rather mumsy type outfits? Um, I don't know, which is what makes watching Lady Louise very, very, very interesting. And I think that is why the media have kind of picked up on her. Um, Queen of Kingsbury says, Lady Louise seems like a country girl. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. She's got a more relaxed style. It's not stylized. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, perhaps mumsy wasn't quite the word. Um, it's not style. It's not overdone. Um, you know, she, she has kind of more natural hair. She's very natural. Um, yeah. 
she's not stylized, I think is what it is. Um, she had a close relationship with her grandpa, Prince. Yeah, um, Prince Philip, I think, was a really big guiding influence and figure in her life. Uh, James says, I'm on holiday in Gibraltar. Ooh, um, a favourite place of the Queen when she was younger. At the moment, I'm staying on the same road Edward and Sophie stayed on. And Lawrence said, well, I hope you enjoy your holiday. Um, Lady Buckingham says, Lady Louise doesn't have a stylist yet. Do you know what? I don't think a lot of the royals have stylists. I think, you know, that's a very celebrity thing to do. And of course, the royals are famous in the regard that people know who they are, but they are not celebrities. Um, and, you know, some um, some of them may have stylists and people helping them choose fashion or if they're working with designers who are going to dress them for an event. But in terms of everyday clothes, unless you are a senior royal who, you know, I mean, even some of the senior royals clearly don't have fashion advice all the time. Um, but no, I, it's very doubtful that she ever will have a, a stylist. Who knows? Um, Mary says, I would love Lady, Lady Louise to be a director of the Royal Flower Show. Lady Louise and Mother Countess Sophie Flower Garden. Well, that's not without the realm of possibility because, of course, Catherine, the, the Duchess of Cambridge, famously had her Back to Nature Garden, which was a huge success at Chelsea. Um, I covered that at great length uh, a few years ago. Um, Laura says, I am so very happy that Lady Louise and James are down to earth. They, they seem it. Of course, there's not as much known about James. He's still um, that bit younger. Um, and of course, you know, perhaps in the future, the media interest will pick up and there'll be a bit more of a buzz around him. But certainly in terms of uh, James Viscount Seven and Lady Louise, there is definitely a growing buzz around Lady Louise. She's, she's one to watch. Uh, she's an interesting one to watch. Um, H. London says, I have read that Lady Louise enjoys writing, which would, you know, tie in very nicely with studying English at university. I mean, I cannot confirm nor deny whether she enjoys writing, but it definitely ties in and fits. Mary says, thanks for explaining. You are more than welcome. I try and give you as many facts as I possibly can. Right, was there anything else on my list that I really wanted to talk about? Um, other than the, uh, I suppose, um, jump, if you like, of the Earl and Countess of Wessex within the royal ranks. So, in the wake of Harry and Meghan going to California, uh, living their life over there, Prince Andrew and his current situation, Edward and Sophie have been bumped up the royal pecking order. They are taking on more royal duties. And the media, you know, has always been kind of fairly interested in, in Sophie. Um, Edward's had his moments. But, you know, since Harry and Meghan stepped back, definitely the spotlight has been increased. Uh, more media attention on the Wessexes. We're certainly seeing more coverage in the press um, about their engagements. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, it's as earth-shattering amount of coverage as, for example, William and Catherine get or what Harry and Meghan were getting, but it has certainly increased. And also the fact that the Queen is relying more upon Edward and Sophie with those duties when she's kind of delegating things out. Um, they definitely have been bumped up that royal pecking order. Um, Princess Anne, I just think she is completely at capacity. I don't think she could take on much more. Um, I mean, you know, she's already taken on one of Prince Harry's uh, military roles. So there's not particularly too much Anne can do. You know, she's she's a, a one woman workhorse. And, you know, um, I, I definitely don't think you could put much more on her. But the Wessexes have had that bump up. Let's put it that way. Um, right. I don't think I have got anything else particularly on my list to talk about. So I will go back to the comments section. Uh, please feel free to ask me any questions that you would like. Um, Queen of Kingsby says, Edward and Sophie are such a stable couple. I love that and they will be just right for the future of the monarchy. They will support Charles and William. I am sure they will for as long as what they are called upon to do. 
Amber Gordon says Princess Anne would have been an incredible queen. She would. And can you imagine the monarchy being run by Princess Anne? How efficient it would be. Seriously. <laughs> it really would be. My favourite picture of Princess Anne. There is a picture of Princess Anne lifting up the lid of a dumpster and taking a look. I, that is, I, I want that photograph framed. I really do. That's, that's going to be in, in my utility. Absolutely. Um, Elaine says, when I went to Gibraltar, it reminded me of how the 1960s were. I wasn't born then, but the pictures I've seen. Yeah, and of course, the Queen was, was um, I think she was stationed there at, at some point. I'm just reading up the comments, see if I've missed anything. Um, Lauren says, I don't think we need to worry too much. I'm another 11 years. Uh, Prince George will be old enough to be a full-time working royal. Well, technically, but think about the age that William really started royal duties. You know, he, William went to university. Um, he then had a gap year. Was it after university or before university? Anyway, he had a gap year, either before university or after. Then he kind of trained to be the um, air ambulance rescue pilot. He had so many years, um, you know, doing that. Then he kind of, then he left and was sort of like a part-time, if you like, working royal. Oh, and he also he did his military training as well. So after, you know, age of 18, um, you know, there's still a lot more to do. So feasibly, Prince George probably wouldn't take up full-time royal duties until late 20s, you know, possibly 30. So we've got more than 11 years to really wait before Prince George um, takes up too much um, royal duty. Um, let's have a look. H London says, Princess Anne has all the strong suits of both her mother and her father. She's hard-working princess. She is, absolutely. No one can say that she's not. Queen of Kingsbury says, uh, remember, William and Harry were given extra... Um, an extra birth, um, oh, you mean leeway in the press, I think you're talking about, because their mother's tragic uh, passing. George might start public duties while in university. Mm, yeah. I'm doubtful that Prince George will take up any meaningful royal duties until university's finished. He's had a taste of, well, he's gone through his military training, uh, because... Obviously, if you're going to be a future monarch, you go through military training. You go, um, you, you do a stint with all of the different forces. Um, then I imagine he's going to want some kind of um, work experience in a role that he may want to go into, whether he continues with the army or any sort of armed forces like Prince Harry did, or whether... Um, he leaves like Prince William did to go and do something like being an air ambulance pilot or something similar. If, however, he doesn't have any particular work interest and then does just want to go into royal duties like Princess Anne. I mean, Princess Anne, um, I don't think she went to university. Um, and then she, she pretty much went straight into royal duties after her education finished. So, you know, there is... Uh, a precedent to go straight into royal duties, but in recent years, we've not really had that precedent with um, Harry and William, uh, William in particular. So I think there will probably be, um, I'd be very doubtful if he went straight into royal duties. It depends entirely upon, I suppose, how, ac how academic he is when he does finally get his military training done, and if he actually does have an interest outside of uh, being a working royal. Lauren says, I think Prince Louis is brilliant. He does not care one bit. He's, I mean, Prince Louis, I said, I said in my previous video, out of all of the Cambridge children, he is probably going to have the most leeway in terms of deciding what he wants to do. Um, so, you know, yeah, I think his personality being a little bit three-willed, shall we say, uh, will kind of suit his position of being the the third born, shall we say. Uh, Faye Reed says, I live 40 minutes from St Andrews. It's a very beautiful town, indeed, and a really good kind of university vibe. 
Lawrence says, I suppose they all do royal duties very young, they just don't know they're doing them. Yeah, they're introduced to royal duties. I mean, we've seen that with the younger royals now. We've taken part in various things with Troop in the Colour. We've seen, for example, you know, um, them being involved with the Commonwealth Games, spect even just as spectators. It doesn't pay to keep the Cambridge children completely out of the spotlight. Um, if you were going to be too private and, you know, they, they weren't going to have any kind of exposure to the media, I think that would kind of do them a little bit of a disservice um, and it wouldn't really prepare them for what is coming. So a certain amount of exposure to the press when it's appropriate and when it's age appropriate as well is fine so long as it's managed well and it's not seen as a chore. So, for example you know, going to watch the sport at the Commonwealth Games, that's a fun thing to do. And as long as the kids are into the sport that they're watching, you know, that's a good thing. Um, you know, going to see the football, um, the women's football, that kind of thing is going to be really good for Princess Charlotte, Prince George, or being involved with Troop in the Colour as well, that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, they are in a way doing royal duties, but it's more of a kind of introduction to it. Hey, Clinton says, by the way, I love the colour and style of your hair. Thank you. Um, I don't know why, but it's developing some kind of a little curl to it. I did not curl this. I just combed it over and it kind of, for the past so many days, it's just kind of flicked into a curl. Ugh. Um, hey, Clinton says, when are you and Matt getting married? We've got the house done, as you can see. Um, we're going on holiday soon. And then we're going to be thinking about what's going to happen with regards to the wedding. I'm just flashing my ring, just so that you all can see. Uh, Laura says, I've always loved watching and listening to me talk about the royal family uh, because I break it down to you. Yeah, I mean, that's why I have my notes. That's exactly why I have my notebook so that I can remember what to say, try and break things down. And just so you can understand it because there is so much waffle out there. There is so much people putting their opinion as fact and what I try and do is if I do if I am saying something that's an opinion based upon a fact or whatever I will tell you it's an opinion um, or a view uh, but then I'll also give you what we know to be true and factual information uh, plus I try you know not to have um, you know a bias in any sort of sort of way um, you know, and eventually I will come on to, to having a live chat, perhaps, um, about the, the Sussexes and what they are up to and what they're doing. Um, you know, who, who knows what I may talk about next. Uh, by the way, do let me know in the comment section what you would actually like me to talk about next. Or, or who you would like me to talk about next. Um, Lauren says, are they going to have a memorial day for Princess Diana? We, we've tended to, in the past, going by past precedents regarding Princess Diana, we've had memorial days when it, when it has been sort of big numbers. So, for example, you know, we had the uh, birthday con um, celebration of life concert organised by William and Harry after 10 years. And then, of course, we had... Uh, the 20th year anniversary where the statue was commissioned. Uh, and then, of course, so many years later, we had the... Um, well, it was... Was it last year? I think it was last year now. We had the unveiling of the statue, of the 20th anniversary statue, um, which, of course, is at Kensington Palace Gardens in the Sunken Garden, um, which, of course, Harry flew over and William and Harry unveiled the statue. So, going by past precedent celebrations or celebration of life uh, memorial normally happens when there's a big number event so I imagine there would there won't be another kind of memorial big scale memorial uh, perhaps the 30th year anniversary maybe which to be fair isn't a million miles away just saying It'll, it'll be here. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I did, I looked when, you know, my first video, sorry, I just touched my microphone, you may have got a little clonk. Um, I've actually been doing this channel for seven years. Can you believe it? It's been seven years of Royal Reviewer. 
I think one of my first earliest videos was 2015. So it's been seven years of Royal Reviewer. Uh, people would like me to talk about Charles and Camilla. Um, oh, quite a lot of people wanting me to talk about um, Charles and Camilla. Uh, maybe talk about Prince Charles and any changes he has had to make with the Queen carrying out fewer engagements. Maybe the next chat I do could be about Charles and Camilla. Okay, I am going to leave it here now. Being back, <laughs> um, some people may not have their notifications turned on, um, so please do make sure you have your notification bell turned on. Uh, because I've not been doing live chats for a while, you may have to click click it off and click it back on again. I'm not sure you know, whether or not, because I haven't posted for so long before I came back to doing it, um, you may have to just kind of click on, click off. Um, also, it really does help the channel and people to get to see these videos if you share them on social media. So I normally say, you know, please like, subscribe, share on social media, but it really does help if you, you know, copy the link to, to the video or press the share button. Uh, it will copy the link and then you can post it in Facebook groups or Twitter, whatever it might be. Um, it really will help to get the exposure back to the channel because I think you know, in my opinion, in my absence, I think there there have been many different kind of fake news channels popping up that are just really being very sensationalist, that aren't really looking, that don't have a conscience in terms of what they're putting out. They're just putting out, you know, lies, rumours, they're repeating things that they've heard other people say on Twitter, which is a carnal mistake. I mean, that is just a mistake, you know, Twitter is so toxic. Um, I try and stay away other than just having a, a little glance of what's going on and what people are saying. Um, so, you know, I think it will help um, to project this channel if you are able to share the link um, wherever you possibly can. Um, Queen of Kingsbury says, how about doing history of the royal family again? That's on my agenda of things to do. Uh, Becky, thank you so, so much. Uh, Christine's remembering my talk of the Crown Saturday night show. Um, and thank you, Laura, who says, I agree, your channel is the best. Thank you so much. So I'm going, ooh, I forgot, I forgot my, my drink. This is my Royal Reviewer merch. I've got some herbal tea in here today. It's actually my gingerbread tea. Um, so yes, this mug is available. It's still about, all my merch is available. Um... So yeah, it's a double-sided Royal Reviewer mug. There we go. Um, and the link for it is down below. So do go and check it out if you want a Royal Reviewer mug and other such merch. So thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also do hit that notification bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me, until next time, to you all and goodbye.